We all want to make money, and there are literally thousands of books and websites and videos on how you can make a lot of money. But there's also a lot of ways that you can lose all of your money. So on today's show, I'm going to discuss two things that you can do to lose every dime you have, and hopefully help you learn from the mistakes that other people have made. Let's jump in. It's time for the My Retirement Clarity Podcast with Lee Perkins, financial planner and president of JL Perkins Wealth Management. Get ready for a good dose of inspiration, simplicity, implementation, and of course, clarity on how to successfully prepare for retirement and grow and preserve your wealth. Here's Ben George with Lee Perkins. Hey there, welcome in to the My Retirement Clarity Podcast. I'm your host, Lee Perkins. I appreciate you tuning in today. One of the things that I do as a financial advisor, and probably it's one of the things that most financial advisors try to do, and that's we all want our clients to, to make money. Now, clearly there are some advisors that have a different strategy than other folks. And if you've listened to this podcast for any amount of time, you know that I'm not a stock picker. I'm not a stock broker, so I'm never going to call any of my clients and recommend that they buy a specific stock. I'm just not going to do that. That's not the world that we live in here in our office. There are certainly people who like that, and if that's what you want to do, that's fine. You, you can go and buy and sell and you know try to time the market. It's what a lot of people try to do, and you're, you're certainly welcome to do that. I just decided a long time ago that's something that I didn't want to be a part of. You know, I want to try to help my clients with their complete retirement plan and help them adapt as things change as they go through the, out the various stages of their, their lives. I, I want my clients to be well diversified. And and I, I really didn't, you know, early on when I I've opened my own business, I, I don't want my value to my clients to simply depend on what a single company does. So, you know, as, as much as most advisors and, and myself included, as much as we all want to show people how to make money, sometimes I think we overlook the importance of showing people how not to lose all of their money. And that's what I want to talk about on today's show. So I've titled this podcast episode, How to Lose All of Your Money. Uh, and I know some of you may be listening and thinking, all right, so why do I want to learn about how to lose all my money? Well, my main goal here is to keep you from making mistakes that I've seen people make in the past who've, who've lost all of their money. I don't want you to lose all of your money. So that's today's show. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to talk about two ways that you can lose all of your money. Uh, and I'm going to add a caveat to this discussion and let you know that, you know, certainly you could make a lot of money doing these two things, but at the end of the day, you've got to decide if the risk is worth the potential reward. For some of you, it may be, and for others, it may not be. So my client base uh, and and probably the folks who are generally listening to this podcast or and the group of folks is usually retired or almost retired. It's a completely different situation than people who may be 25 or 30 years old. All right, so that's kind of the, the caveat here. All right, so the first way for you to lose all of your money is by investing your life savings in a business idea of a friend, a relative, or or your, your child. And so what generally happens here is that an adult child or even a you know a 20 year old that's I still consider that an adult child uh, or even older that they come up with some type of business idea and because the parent loves the child believes in them a hundred percent they agree to fund the operation completely whatever the business idea is and and this may not be a bad thing if it's only a portion of your money but when it's all of your money, this is when you're leading yourself in, into some dangerous waters. So I met with somebody a few years ago that had about, I think about $700,000 saved for their retirement. Now they recently retired from their job and, and they, were, they were fine. Everything was good. But within about three months, they had a relative approach them about a, a business idea. And the idea was pretty simple. 
they wanted to start getting into real estate and, and buying properties and renting them out. So I tried to dig a little bit deeper uh, just so I could learn a little bit more about the plan. So this person told me they were going to start out by buying one house and turning it into some type of duplex uh, and then renting it out to college students. And then after this was done, they were going to buy another property and sort of do the same thing. Uh, they told me they had 100% confidence in the relative that approached them. And they told me that this relative, they were confident that they were going to be a billionaire within 10 years. Not a millionaire, but a billionaire with a B. Now, keep in mind that this relative was already 60 years old, and for the first 60 years of their life, they'd saved virtually zero money. That's why they were approaching this person. Um, but their story was very convincing, and they were, they were able to convince this person to use their entire life savings to financially back the, the real estate empire that they were going to build. So within the first nine months, this person spent $400,000 of, of the $700,000 that she retired with just to rehab one property. And, uh, you know, that's just a rehab. And so within the next 14, 12 to 14 months, I can't remember for sure, this person was completely out of money. And at that point, the relative decided that real estate wasn't for them. So eventually, they, they wound up in a dispute over who owns the two properties that they wound up with. Uh, and of course, lawyers eventually got involved. And Really, what happened was both of these people were blinded by the idea of becoming rich. Um, and, and the pipe dream of becoming a billionaire is probably going to wind up costing this, this lady her entire life savings. I don't think she's going to see any of the money just because of how everything transpired. So, again, I'm not saying that this is going to happen to you if you go down this path, but you got to be aware of the risk that you're taking when you loan somebody or give somebody else the money for some type of idea that, that they have, no matter whatever that idea is or however great it seems at the time, there's always a danger there. So that's the first way that you can lose all of your money. Hey folks, Lee Perkins here. If you've listened to this podcast for any amount of time, you know how much I hate taxes, and I know you probably do too. Our politicians are completely out of control. Their spending is off the chart. And you've got to be prepared for increasing taxes in the future. So we've written a book called Diffuse, Seven Steps to Protecting Your 401k or IRA from the Ticking Tax Time Bomb. You're going to want to grab a copy of this book and learn how you can protect yourself. Then you'll have to decide if you want to take action right now or if you'd rather wait until the IRS changes the rules of the game. Either way, the choice is yours. To get a free copy of the book, just text the word DEFUSE to 478-475-2050. That's D-E-F-U-S-E to 478-475-2050. And we'll send you a free copy. Thanks again for listening. Now back to the show. The second way that I want to talk about is probably a little bit more common. And this is simply investing all of your money in one company. And I think you would probably be surprised to know how many people have their entire life savings in one position in one company. And just like I said about the first situation of loaning all your money to a friend or a relative, just as that doesn't always go south, having all your money in one company or one stock doesn't always go south either. But it does happen, and when it does, the consequences can really be devastating. And, and I think, you know, we've seen this recently if there have been, a, as, you know, there's, there's been a couple of bank failures, uh, high profile in the news. Probably the most notable one was the bank out of California, the Silicon Valley Bank. Uh, this started to make a, a lot of people nervous because immediately people began wondering if, if we're headed towards the same financial crisis that we were in back in 07 and 08. And, and I would tell you that I've not heard a single credible expert tell me that we are on that same path, that this is a completely different situation than what happened back then. Um, you know, the banking industry is, is, is totally different than it was back then. But the lesson is the same. And so the people who got hurt the most are the people that had most or all of their money 
tied up in the stock of this one bank. And I've shared this on the podcast before, my experience with a bank stock. Back in 2008, there was a local bank right here in Macon called Security Bank. Uh, And they might have actually been a small regional bank. I can't remember for sure. But either way, they'd always been a pretty strong bank. But they started to have some financial trouble around this period of time. It was probably early or mid-2008. So about every week or two, the bank would send over some of their officers to our office at the firm that I worked at at the time. It was a brokerage firm. They'd get all of the brokers in, in the big conference room, and we could invite our clients in, the clients that had large positions in this, this company, um, to listen to what the these officers and directors had to say. And they, they'd give us an update on things, and they'd tell us, you know, that they were doing okay. It's just kind of hit a rough patch and, and they'd get through it. And then after they would leave, some of the older advisors in the in the office, they'd stop by my office and tell me that, you know, and, and I was one of the, the younger advisors at the time. I was early 30s and, and they'd come by the office and say, hey, Security Bank, it's, it's a $25 stock and it's on sale right now for $8 a share and you need to start loading up on it. And so I was pretty tempted because I, I really felt like I had the opportunity to buy, you know, some shares of this at a discount and then make a, make a nice return. So I went to my wife, Pam, and, and told her about the opportunity and, and told her I was thinking about putting a chunk of our money in, in this stock. And, and I wanted her opinion. And, and of course, we all know what she told me. She said, don't do it. I heard her, but I didn't listen because, you know, she was quote, just teacher, you know, she didn't know this stuff. And I did because I was the, I was the suit wearing stockbroker at the time. So I put about $10,000 of our $15,000 emergency fund at the time. And that was a, a big chunk of money for us back then. I put that into this, into this stock. So we can fast forward a few months later, the FDIC came in, took over, the stock went to zero and, and I lost every dime of that money. Um, And and I would tell you this is probably why, uh, you know, my experience is probably why I never recommend any of my clients now buy an individual stock. Again, my clients are retired or almost retired. So I just don't think it's, I don't think it's worth it. If I was an advisor who's working with 20 or 30 year old clients, I might have a, a different thought on the use of an individual stock. But so here's what I see happen. People wind up falling in love with an individual stock, and and they generally wind up with with all or a big portion of their money in one company. And and when this happens, you put yourself in danger of losing all your money. And and I don't care what the company is or how safe you think that company is or how great of a company it is, you could be in trouble. Uh, you, your one bad news story or bad press release from that stock taking. A, a huge dive and possibly going to zero. Um, I met with somebody recently who's got literally millions, not one, three, or four million dollars, millions of dollars in the stock of one company. And this is a company that she worked for for her entire career. And, and frankly, this company is probably the reason why she's wealthy. So she came, you know, she came to me and says she knows she needs to diversify into some other things and wanted my help on it. So met with her a couple of times and, and put together a, a plan to diversify over time. But ultimately, she couldn't pull the trigger on making a change. And at this point, when we were meeting, you know, she'd already lost a lot of money with the company. The, the stock value had gone down, and she said she wanted the weight on it to come back before we made any changes. And so that's the danger. You know, she's got everything tied up in one company. And so now she's at the mercy of whatever happens with that company. And she's just hoping that it, that she gets back to where she was so she can start getting out. Now, do I think this company that that she owns is going to zero? You know, I really don't. I I do think it's a good company, but at, at one point, probably a lot of people thought Enron was a good company. Uh, or maybe they thought Sears was a good company, or, or whatever it is. Every company's got its flaws, and every company has things that could go wrong. 
and and really things that they don't even know about at this point could go wrong and, and wreck the company. So in my opinion, it's just not worth the risk for somebody who's who's retired or almost retired. And so that's why we diversify our, our clients over multiple asset classes. So if, if one company that they own inside of their, their portfolio goes under, it might sting a little bit, but it's not going to be devastating. So there you've got it. Two ways that you can lose all of your money. Um, you can give a friend or a relative all your money for, for some type of business idea, or you can invest it all in one company. Either way, it's a huge roll of the dice, and I just I just don't think that's a game that, that you should play. So anyway, I hope this was helpful. Again, my goal here is to keep you from making the same mistakes that I've seen people make before. So if you're in a position where you feel like you need some help, you want somebody to talk to, please reach out to me. You can connect with me by visiting www.talkwithlee.com. You can click right there uh, and grab a 15-minute spot on my calendar. We'll talk a little bit about your situation, and I'll let you know if I can help you. So thanks again for tuning in. Hope you have a great rest of the week, and we'll catch you next time. Lee Perkins here, and I want to thank you so much for tuning into the show today. If you like our podcast, we would be honored if you would share the show with others. And one great way to do that is by posting the show to your social media pages or by just telling others about it. Either way, we would really appreciate it. And of course, if you do enjoy the show, we would appreciate it if you would give us a five-star review. And this certainly helps other people like you find our show. And if you want to learn a little more about our firm and how we help people have the best retirement they can possibly have, Go check us out at www.myretirementclarity.com. There are a lot of great resources that you can access directly on the website. And of course, if you want to have a conversation with me, you can visit www.talkwithlee.com. And this will take you directly to my calendar. And there you can schedule a 15-minute phone call so I can learn a little bit more about your situation. Of course, everybody is not a great fit for our firm. But if I think we can add value and put you in a better situation, I'll let you know, and we can certainly talk about the next steps. So thanks again for tuning into the show, and we'll catch you next time. Investment advisory services are offered by JL Perkins Wealth Management, a registered investment advisor and insurance agency. Information is for illustrative purposes only and does not constitute tax, legal, or investment advice. Always consult with a qualified tax, legal, or investment professional before taking any action.